So I'm very conscious and intentional about the things that I say. So I wouldn't say, oh yeah, I'm going to get married again. And after things happened with the pandemic, it made me realize, oh, I actually want to be married again. I'm Latera Sarwicki and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latera R. Whitfield. Listen, I'm so excited to kick off season three of the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Listen, you guys have been rocking with us for so many episodes, and we're just going to turn up the heat a little bit more. Hey, make sure that you hit that notification bell. If you haven't subscribed to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast, what are you waiting for? Stop shacking up with us and make a commitment and subscribe. You like that essence? <laughs> So listen, uh, we're going to have so much fun on today's episode. I have my good friend. Uh, you've seen her on TV. You've seen her in movies. Uh, but a lot of y'all haven't been afforded the opportunity to see her as the beautiful soul that she is. And so I'm so honored to have her on the podcast. Uh, y'all know her as, you know, a lot of you guys may look at her and say she's absolutely beautiful, which she is. But the content of her character is even far more beautiful than her exterior and so i'm excited to have her on the show today so uh without further ado welcome to the dear future wifey podcast my homie <laughs> essence atkins what's going on buddy oh my gosh what a blessing it is to be here thank you so much for having me for inviting me so, so you like when i said uh, stop shacking up with us i do i do <laughs> i think that that is a big problem happening throughout <laughs> throughout the world is what? uh people want the benefit without the commitment oh talk about it so so when you say you see that you see that often how important is it to make a commitment instead of just having the benefit I, I mean I think it's crucial for the health of a relationship and and what is the world but a bunch of relationships so in the micro it's crucial for all of us to be cared for to feel safe to feel known to feel supported and then in the macro I think that that just continues to proliferate throughout the world and reverberate and that's why there's so much uh, tumultuous uh, tumultuous situations yeah. going on because situation ships situation ships <laughs> but we're not being responsible for each other we're not yeah. moving intent with intentional purpose in terms of being aware of how we are affecting one another mm. okay you're just gonna just jump right on in there huh? I, I, I was trying to slide down a little bit and try to you know I say how you doing in the yeah yeah no, just let's keep slide it, in let's keep I want to see public. how you was doing during the pandemic, you know, just, you know. Oh, just. yeah, the the pandemic illuminated a lot of stuff, right? I yeah. Mean, I think that was the great thing about the world coming to a halt is that we couldn't distract ourselves from the things yes. that were, were really um, plaguing us. You know, we had a lot of ill that we weren't aware of because we were so distracted and busy and yeah. everything came to a screeching halt. So during the pandemic, I think like most people, I... I was fortunate where I didn't struggle in, in terms of a lot of ways. Like I had plenty of toilet paper. That's just something I, <laughs> that's just something I always have. So, so you, it so didn't you, have you anything out, to do with So COVID. you don't want, I should have called for toilet paper. Yes. See, oh, um, but not only that, you know, so there were many ways that I, I was covered and good. And then there were other ways where I felt really vulnerable and raw and quite sad and quite scared. I mean, you know, to be an artist, to be an actress at a time where everything is shut down and doing what I do can't really be done six feet away. Yes. Um, so there was definitely that worry that was plaguing me. And I found ways to combat it. One of the ways that I combat, uh, that I had to combat the, the angst and the anxiety mm -hmm. and the sadness and the isolation and all the things that we went through was, um, I had to get deeper into that word. Yes. I had to just, you know, I joined two new Bible studies. I was already a part of one, but I joined two other ones. Um, and they made such a huge difference just in terms of like me being in the word and really growing and having my foundation in Christ just grow even, even deeper and having those roots just get stronger um, so that I could bend and not break. Mm, talk about it. So talk there about was it. that. But the other thing that I did that was really a prompting of the Holy Spirit was um, I started a school. Now, I know this is... Like, yeah, come on. It's weird. Okay, so basically my son, I have a nine-year-old son, and last year when everything shut down on March 13th in Los Angeles, I had already decided 
with his dad. We were divorced, but we had already talked about keeping him home. I said, I don't like where what's happening. I think we should keep him home. And then literally like the following day or two days later, the school was like, we're going to remote learning. And everybody was trying to learn what that was. Mm -hmm. um, my son has been going to this school, this small little Christian school called Monarch Christian School since he was two and a half. And so it's a very small school. He only had 13 classmates in the entire second grade. Hmm. So everybody went to distance learning and was learning online. In July, we got an email, an unexpected email, saying that the school was closing permanently, having nothing to do with COVID, but obviously be a ca catalyst. The yeah. catalyst was COVID yeah. because of funding, of course. right? Because this is a private school and they rely so much on on donations and grants and all of that kind of stuff right. and everything had um just trickled down um so i panicked i panicked i read this email i immediately i was in bed when i read it i immediately started my son wasn't even up yet i started googling christian schools in the neighborhood like what was where was there another school that was kind of like monarch and I found this school that was kind of similar or felt kind of similar. And, and then there were all these protocols listed about what they were going to do, when they could return to in-person learning, what it might look like. We wouldn't be able to walk them to the door. We wouldn't be able to see the campus, like all of this stuff, because L.A. at that point yeah, was, was still shut down. fully shut yeah, down. Yeah, it was fully shut down. So I was just panicked. And I heard the Holy Spirit clear as day say, empty your guest house. And I was like, um... I just finished decorating my guest house. What do you would like? It's so cute in there. My guest house is for guests, which of course I wasn't having during COVID. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, what are you talking about? And I heard it again, empty your guest house. So I was like, all right. So I called my son's best friend's mother and I asked her, did you read the email? She's like, I'm just reading the email. And she kind of started ranting about she's a nurse. And she was like, maybe I could take more days off. Maybe maybe we could just, if we could just keep the boys together. If I don't know, I'm not a teacher. Like she was just rambling. And I said, well, let me tell you what the Holy Spirit just said. Empty your guest house. And she goes, oh, would you do that? And I said, if the Holy Spirit's telling me to do it, yes. I'll, I, I mean, yes. So that afternoon... Wow. She was in my living room, and there were two other families in my living room. And of the 13 students that were in my son's second grade, I have nine of them. Wow. We took one of the teachers who was now also newly unemployed. Unemployed, yeah. Um, and we, as the parents, uh, pay her the salary that she would have made working for the school. We split it equally based on child because we have a couple of sisters. Um, our little group, our little pod group. So one of the dads, I mean, God is so awesome in how he worked this out. But one of the dads is former military. He was a Navy officer. So he comes twice a week and teaches the kids gym. <laughs> he teaches them PE. And then another one of the moms, she is a psychology professor at Pepperdine. So anything that we have about how the kids are developing or issues we can bring to her. Like I said, my son's best friend's mom is a nurse. She's a pediatric nurse at Kaiser. So we have all Top of this. Of the line, we boy. just have all this resource. So it's like God gave me the instruction and then not knowing like everything kind of came together and literally in three weeks my guest house got emptied we had desks we had a, a a whiteboard we have i mean if you look on my if you look on my instagram you can see how the room was transformed in three weeks and we have a full-time teacher and the other great thing that we do which i love is that as a collective as families we mrs parmalee has an hour lunch break so one of the parents comes <laughs> for an in. hour every day and it's really been an amazing thing because we've, though we knew each other, we really know yeah, each other yeah. and we know each other's kids. And really, um, we are a village. And it's so funny because the Holy Spirit was, again, very clear and gave me a name. So we call ourselves the Risen Village. Mm. And we spelled Risen, R-I-S-O-N, because it's for the, the sun, sun who rose. Yeah, so that's 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 what I did. And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I'm being obedient. I'm doing this thing because of the Holy Spirit. And, and yes, I feel really blessed to be in a position to have this other space that they can come and come in and use and, and all of that. And I have a huge backyard I put up. A, and it's so funny because, that's again, crazy. like how God worked it out. During the pandemic, like I had all these points 
on my American Express card and, I, and my son was home and I was like, I need to get him like, I had a huge backyard, but not really anything mm. back there. So I got like this really big boy play structure. So there's like swings and monkey bars and a slide. <laughs> so the kids came, the parents came and they were like, like this was just here. And I'm like, I know, like God worked it out. And, and, and again, like interestingly enough, when I was telling my church, cause we were doing remote church, yeah. when I was telling them to please pray while we were getting this thing together in such a short period of time, I was like, you know, they were like, well, let us know when we can come and we'll s distance outside and we'll bless the space. Yes. And my best friend goes, well, Pastor Kim already did that. And I was like, what? And she goes, don't you remember last week, Pastor Kim? And my pastor had called me on a Monday and she goes, hey, so I'm thinking about your guest house. Now this is before this happened. Wow. And I said, that's the first thing she said. And I said, yeah, she goes, I took the week off. I just want to spend some time with God, but she adopted two young boys. So she's like, you know, I can't get anything done when I'm home. I just want to spend some time with God. How would you feel if I just came and prayed in your guest house? And I was like, yeah, sure. Of course. It's so cute in there. Come on. So the week before she had spent eight hours in my guest house, praying heaven down. <sighs> I didn't even know, I didn't even put the two things together. And so I guess my point is, is that how I survived the pandemic is obedience, mm. getting in the word and submitting. And and the thing is, is that I ended up being blessed in, in ways that, I mean, I could literally take up the whole podcast talking about how being of service has blessed me, yes. how it's kept me from feeling isolated, how it's kept me in purpose, how the sound of those kids in the backyard has, because I don't have any family in Los Angeles. So if my son isn't with me because I share 50-50 custody with my ex-husband, if he's not with me, it's just me. Yeah. And those kids being in my backyard and yes. that just gave me such purpose. Yes. It gave me such um, passion and something to focus on beyond beyond the noise, beyond the catastrophe, beyond beyond the tragedy of what was happening. Cause it wasn't just the COVID, you know, thing that was proliferating. Yeah. It yeah. was also George Floyd. It was yes. so much things, so many things going on. And and I'm so, so grateful that God gave me a vision. You know what? This I mean, that whole story just reminds me of Noah. Like he was like, right. go build the ark. So you just had this arc moment and without even knowing what God was going to do strategically to align everything in that whole neighborhood, everything in the school to actually just converge in your backyard like that. And the provision that, or the, the wherewithal that God had to bring your past in to bless the, like it's just, that's the stuff that blows my mind. That's that stuff when people who are atheists or agnostic that don't believe that God is real, you say, explain this, right? Explain that. Like, right. please do whatever you got to do to explain <laughs> that. Please convince me of how this worked out. Right. You know, and it's just even all the way down to the play set and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's like God is so intentional about serving his people. And that's what's so dope about that whole situation. So you just finna just jump in here and just talk about how, <laughs> how good God has been. How good God is. Essence. I invited you on a clubhouse one day yes. and uh, on that clubhouse, it was a, um, the subject matter was talking about abstinence as well as talking about uh, marriage. And you joined this clubhouse and in your talk, it literally brought tears down my face. Do you remember that clubhouse? I remember the invitation, but I don't remember what I said. You were talking about how the pandemic brought the heaviness of what singleness means like you really felt like it really brought the brevity of singleness now yeah. does that jog your memory yeah no i mean for sure that was some of what i was struggling with i think a lot of us were is just recognizing that i wasn't covered like yes god yes. has me and god covers me and i rely on that and no one can cover me the way god does yeah. right but at the same time i definitely felt the absence of partnership and the absence of having someone pray over me or someone pray with me and just being able to have a partner in how we were going to approach our strategy in dealing with this you know um and so i definitely felt exposed and i decided like i don't like this like i definitely and it 
is interesting because after my divorce, I couldn't necessarily bring myself to the idea that I wanted to get married again. Yeah. Like I definitely was like, oh, I want to be with somebody, <laughs> but you well, know, you it was like a little just, light partnership or yeah. something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want a light partnership. I mean? We ain't gonna go yeah. through all, all yeah, that. Yeah, you know, it's like I was definitely hesitant in in saying that because I, I really believe in the power of articulation. We are speaking spirits, and I I know that you know if we look at again even in Genesis and how everything began. Yes, it began in God's thoughts, but then it had to get executed in speaking, right? And Talk so that it. is how we are in made in his image and likeness. So I'm very conscious and intentional about the things that I say. So I wouldn't say, oh yeah, I'm going to get married again. And after things happened with the pandemic, it made me realize, oh, I actually want to be married again. I want to be in a committed relationship. I want the promises of God that come from that kind of commitment. Yes. So, yeah, that was illuminating and freeing. Um, see, so you've been married before, so you understand covenant. Yes. So a lot of people don't understand covenant. And so when you say that you, during the pandemic, it, it made you feel exposed and made you realize that you weren't covered. I want you to speak on that because you've been married before mm -hmm. and now you're a single woman. Then what do you mean? Why is it? Why is covenant so important? Well, I mean, you know, God made man and then he saw that it wasn't good for him to be alone. Right. And so then he made us to help, right? We we were chosen and designed and made specifically to help man. And there's something very fulfilling. And I know that a lot of feminists will get caught up in the in the yeah. the, the minutia of like, well, I can do it by myself. I absolutely can and, do it by myself. And you're doing it by yourself. I'm doing it by myself. Exactly. Um, but the the way that I feel the purpose that's ignited in me, the joy that's ignited in me. Again, it's like another layer of service. Of be because to me, like mm -hmm. real partnership, real marriage is not about what am I getting out of this. It's, it's about, about service. It's about service. Yes. It's about how you give to each other and how it augments you. And, and it allows you a certain space to grow because now you're supplemented in a way where your weaknesses are augmented in a way where you can grow bigger than you are in your own casement and therefore you can you can serve a greater purpose but it takes it takes a certain amount of study and knowledge and awakening to know that i know that so now without being in a covenant it just made me aware of how much joy I get from being of service. Like, you know, a lot of people like, I love hard yes. and, and, and I do love hard, but it's also, there's a joy to me in, in being able to be of service in being in looking, I don't know, maybe it's part of the actress in me, but you know, as actors, we're always kind of asking that why, why? right? Yeah. That's what we're always looking for the motivation. Yes. Why that silence? Why did that character say that? Why did that character, yeah. like what's motivating? Yes. And for me, there's such pleasure in finding out the why behind another human being mm. and figuring out how to love them how to love them in a way that you see Christ, how to love them. And, and like what better safer environment than when you're both on that same page and you're both committed to being that to each other, to being the representative of Jesus and love in a covenant situation in an intimate situation in a way that no other human on this earth knows that person right mm, mm, mm. that is such a beautiful powerful thing like that's the reason i've been able to wait is because i understand it's not about the punitive aspect i when i first became a christian i knew i couldn't wait because it wasn't motivated by love it was motivated by fear or or this kind of rule set, this thing that I was trying to follow. And that's never something you can sustain. Yes. But when you think about love and when I think about the power that is unleashed in two people agreeing that we are like, I know how I feel in my friendships when I know that that person is ride or die yeah. and I can call them at whatever time and they'll pray with me. Like, yes. I can't imagine. Well, I will know what that's like to have that person be laying right next to me hold on see let me tell y'all something <laughs> so look i told essence the other day i said the reason why i only talk to you like every couple of months because i will literally fall in love with you i'll be trying to move in next door let me tell you something this girl every time i talk to this doggone girl it messes me 
up. And I'm like, I'm like this, Lord Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Just know after this podcast, I ain't going to talk to you for about three months. <laughs> okay. I, I call you in August sometime. Okay. Let that, me tell you something. What? 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 But, but that's like, I, I don't, I don't, I only have my own life experience, but I know that that is something that I have searched for my whole life. <sighs> that safe space and it's not a perfect space yes but it's a safe one and i think that when you have that you can flourish you can be purposed you can fly in ways that you just can't do i mean the word talks about us needing each other and and how much stronger we are when when there are two or three gathered how the rope doesn't break when there's three, uh, three core strands cords like that is the strong if you go <laughs> to a boat you see it executed in the natural yes. but it comes from a spiritual execution it comes from from the from the uh the mathematics from the mind of god which is why we see it everywhere just being lived out in ways that are tangible yes. but it was a thought first it was the science of god first so that thing like when you when you see that and you recognize it like i want that unapologetically and Come if on. that means i have to deny myself to get it then that's what it means but no when it's mine it's going to be so so powerful and i'm gonna be able to look at my partner and go i waited for you i was intentional about waiting to love you i didn't allow myself to be distracted by by a substitute i didn't allow myself to be distracted or undermined by something that i knew wasn't the right thing it was just good for now like i wanted to give you all the potency i can't wait to see his face when he's like you you uh, you said what now i said i want to give you all the potency all the potency that i have within my womb which isn't just the womb isn't just about where i give talk birth to about babies. it the talk. womb is about where we give birth to purpose talk man let me tell you something girl i'm gonna, I'm gonna tap this whole <laughs> tape girl don't you start as I told you before, I said, God is going to use you so powerfully. Like you are a freaking minister. You are an evangelist. You're a prophetess. You are pro <laughs> every, you're the fivefold ministry all oh, rolled up in gosh. one. But I told you that I told you, do you hear you? I, I do. And the funny My thing is, is when I'm sitting in the lobby and I'm so nervous and I just feel so unqualified. I mean, you know, I was listening to Pastor T.D. Jakes talk about don't drop the mic. And yes. he was talking about, you know, greatness being in the details. And I'm very detail oriented, which is part of the reason I was able to get this school done in such a short amount of time. <laughs> it's like they the parents said yes. And then they let me run with the details. And, and that <laughs> was start a whole school. And and it was great. And I love that aspect of it. Um and I love, but I also am a collaborator. Like I, I think there's something really important about yes, having vision, but also being able to, to execute with others and to incorporate the wisdom around you because it's there. Like we don't operate in a bubble, nothing again, just look at science. Nothing about science says we operate all by ourselves yeah. and what we do doesn't have any effect <laughs> on anything else. Exactly. So, you know what I mean? So if you just look at the natural examples around us, it's important that you understand understand that the people around you you're absorbing that energy i mean you know they'll talk about it in different kinds of terms but the language is really talking about god and the principles of how he made this world so we are absorbing we are exchanging and so it's really important to be able to understand that there's giftings around you that you don't have and it's not a matter of you not being enough it's just a matter of you were designed for a specific aspect of this vision and it requires collaboration yes so um i think it's really important to to know that and to incorporate the ideas around you um but in terms of like how i feel i don't walk around feeling like oh i'm this person who knows all this stuff and i'm really <laughs> wise and yeah let me talk to you about like i literally was in the lobby and i was just like holy spirit just just move me out the way you say what you want your people to know. You say what whoever is flipping, listening, yes. you know, surfing, whatever wants, needs to hear. And I just want to be of service to someone. 
So hopefully there's something I'll say that is of service to someone, that is of encouragement to someone, because it's not easy. And, and again, like when I first got saved, the aspect of waiting was literally yeah. the one area of my life that I told God, <laughs> I ain't gonna be listen, do Lord, yeah, I ain't gonna be you know, that. you yeah. made me. I'm not a virgin. <laughs> There's no reason I should pretend to be a virgin. I really like sex. I'm just going to live in your grace. And <laughs> listen, and the thing is, is that I did. And, and over time, I'm just so, I'm so grateful for God's patience. Yes, he's a gentleman. Because he was so patient with me in allowing me to suffer the consequences yes, of that of, mentality. Of, of, of your choices. But also, like, just the patience of, like, exposure and time and letting me just figure out what was happening and why I was injuring myself. Because, mm. honestly, the last time I had sex... Mm. It's not that it was a bad experience and it's not that it like from an ego standpoint, I will say this on paper. <laughs> I was like, this is a great thing on paper. This yeah. is awesome. This person is hot. Yeah. They have a great body. They're yeah. super successful. Like there were a lot of yeah. bragging rights yeah. in like, you know, in that. But at the end of it, I was like, oh, but this feels really awful. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, there's no commitment here. There's no <laughs> promise here. This person has not chosen to keep me, <clears throat> to cover me, to pray with me, to be there in sickness and in health for richer, for poorer, <sighs> for better, for worse. That has not ever come out of their mouth which means they haven't declared it, which means for me to count on it or look for it is, is just an assumption and it's an assertion that they didn't ask for because they never promised that. And so now I'm driving myself crazy, but now I'm angry at them. That's what's happening. Do you know somebody's getting set free right now? I hope so. Let me tell you something. When I say somebody is being set free listening, when I say that is so freaking powerful i had that exact conversation with a friend on the way picking you up to, uh, from the airport it, it the exact same conversation and i was like do you not realize that when i say let me tell you something essence as you know in december of last year i took a vow of abstinence and it was me actually valuing myself on a different level I didn't even realize men are never taught to value your body like we're not taught that you know and so you know and i hope that not only you pour into your son about the value of his body but a man his father says listen you're valuable wait because we're not we're not told that at all yeah. women are told that little girls are told that but boys aren't and so you have this juxtaposition of a guy that says go smash whoever you want to smash right. and a girl saying I got to be chased and I got to right. wait and then you have this battle right. and and the unfortunate thing about it is that I went through life not even realizing the value of my body so I frivolously gave it out oh that feel good are you cool you cool hey you know we on the same page go ahead let's let, let's have sex and hey Make sure that we don't mitigate the damage because we have this understanding because we grown. Mm -hmm. So we just going to keep it growing. And you know, I ain't in a relationship with you. We ain't in a relationship. Just, hey, here it is. But I recognize when God pulled my coattail back in December and said, I expect more of you. He said that you are so valuable. He said your body is valuable. And I was like, really? Like, I've yeah. never, ever heard that before. You're I'm, the housing. I'm... You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we're supposed to keep ourselves pure. And it's, again, Hold it's on, not. We are the temple of the what? The Holy Spirit. So if, we, if, we're, if we're the temple, it's like going into the church and just peeing all everywhere and <laughs> defecating all in the church. People be like, what is wrong with you? Why right. are you doing this? Right. Why, why are you, like, going into the church doing something so reckless? But we do it with our bodies yeah. as Christians. Yeah. And, you know, again, like I think it, it goes back to messaging, right? We're not taught Ever. those things. Men aren't taught to value their bodies. And women are taught to put so much value on their bodies. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? Like, and, it, and, it, and it gets twisted either way. It either gets twisted in a place of like such great shame yeah. where they don't feel like they deserve to know pleasure. Yeah. And that everything is about like that's not. Listen, God did not give you a clitoris for it to just, you know, that yeah. thing is powerful. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so it's not like it wasn't supposed to feel good for us exactly. as well. But, you know, or it's the other extreme where it's like all the emphasis is put on your exterior yes. as a woman. And it's all about your prowess. And it's all about can you pop that? And, yep. and it, you know, and everything is like just 
bust it focus, down. Yeah, bust just it. focus on on that. And it's like we're just we're totally catering to our lower man, right? We're yes. totally catering to the natural and the carnal and we're not at all living in the spirit, which is which is what we are. This is this is a casing. This yes. is this is this is finite. This yeah. is this is not infinite. And Sarkiko's so, flesh. Yeah. That's so all it is. It's really it, but again, we don't have these conversations. And then, you know, for those of us who didn't grow up in the church, like I didn't, when you become saved later on, or when you choose to become saved later on, nobody's really having these conversations. Nah, like nah. you're not really understanding you're, I can say this, like, I know that the Holy Spirit told me to, to submit and go to the altar and confess, but I also know that I was caught up in a feeling and no one helped me make the distinction and no one ta taught me how to count the cost or what it looked like to die to my flesh or what it looked like to to surrender and and take up my mantle daily what it looked like to renew my mind daily. like nobody taught me those things it was all kind of based around this this feeling of who god is and how he loves me which is true but like and it, god is not a pimp you know <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like whatever we we are taught in the human condition about we live in a way where it's all about like exchange right so it's about i'm gonna put in three dollars and i'm gonna and out of this machine they're going to give me this bottle of, yep. of water and yes. that's like we look for you know cost and reward but there's something that is so much greater than that and it's love mm. and love isn't necessarily about being equal like the way god loves me i can never, never. love him back i'm not i'm not capable my ego wouldn't allow it. The flesh suit wouldn't allow it. But when I understand how much God loves me and all that he did for me, then there is something about me that goes, I want to honor that. There it is. I want to honor that. And if this sacrifice, which by the way, after you do it, you go, oh, it's the same thing with the school. Like, it, this is blessing me. Yes. Is it a sacrifice? Yes. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not a sacrifice to, to wait, right, to abstain. But is it blessing me? Let me tell you what I've noticed. Talk about it. I'm, and this is real talk. There are timbers in a man's voice that will get me excited. Now, Talking about this that's voice, it. talking about this timber right here. No, this no, no. <laughs> this, this He's so silly. Oh my like gosh, this. no, sorry. Okay, okay. No, voice. but okay. I'm saying like there are th there are frequencies now that I can hear because I'm not so numb. Talk. That I'm like, wow, it doesn't, it doesn't take all of that to get me excited. It doesn't take all of that. Like I don't have to bombard my senses with all of this stuff because I'm desensitized from all that I've exposed myself to. Mm. Now I'm super sensitive. Let me tell you. Talk about future it. Future hubby. There it is. It's about to be. <laughs> Whoever. It's, it's, it's about to be. It's real. about to go it's, down. It's, it's going to. No, because again, like. I really feel like now I'm I'm so much more again it's like a sober mind. There it is. There this sobriety that I live with makes me that much more sensitive. Mm. So, you know. <laughs> so listen to this, when you look at the disconnect, like mm -hmm. I said, you and I both have been married before. When mm -hmm. you look, what was missing in the previous marriage? Um I think without Without getting too personal, I think what was missing really was just being in real obedience and surrender to God. I think that for both of us yeah. in different ways, like I think that had we been better equipped and now mind you, we are both believers and we got married, um, by a minister of the gospel. So it's not like we, we yeah. didn't have that understanding, but I don't think that we were really rooted in a way that was going to keep us together through all that we had to sustain and get through together. Um, yeah. And that's really kind of the simplistic answer. But it's powerful because I understand exactly what you mean. And that's what I said that that's what this season is about is really unpacking. I don't think that there's enough um, teaching or even understanding. Like you'll go through marriage counseling maybe for a premarital class mm -hmm. for maybe a couple of Which sessions. We did. Yep. Yeah, and I did the same thing, but it's kind of hard. Well, first of all, it's impossible to to prepare someone 
for marriage. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like having gone through it, you have a better understanding. Well, if you've done the work right. to understand and look at it from a, you know, from a higher level and look down and like, look at, look, look at me in that marriage. And right. then God begins to uncover your, your faults and say, this is what you could have done better. You weren't even prepared for this level. You walked with, cause even my life, I knew that, um, I was walking in the spirit of semi-rebellion with God because it was like, oh, I got this. You know, I'm good. You know, I'm good. Like, right. I made it here. I'm married. I understand this. But then when hard times came, I was like, God, I need you. All right, you're taking too long. And then I go take it. I'll, I'll take matters in my own hands, yeah. which self-destructs. Yeah. And so the reality is that now the place that I'm at now is that and I said this on my podcast. I said, God told me I'll never be faithful to my future wifey unless I first become faithful to him. And so my act of obedience isn't just an act. It's a lifestyle. It's a it's a service unto God of saying that, God, here's my body. You know, right now is under lock and key with you until you give me the key back. And that's when I get married. But other than that, I'm married to you. So I got to operate with this fidelity to you, Christ, while I'm single, because if I don't, then when I I get married I'm gonna repeat the what I They're did before mistakes. and cheat on my wife yeah. so it's like I said God so I got to get it right I got to kill this Goliath right now before this Goliath come and kill me later in, in, in my next marriage and so the the powerful thing about um this walk with Christ as Christians and as you said God has been so he's such a gentleman mm -hmm. he's such a gentleman to be like all right I'm gonna let you go do what you do <laughs> how'd it work out for you yeah, right. it hurt it hurt, it hurt. I can't even tell you I mean <laughs> When I, when I think about, like you said, taking matters into my own hands, how much I have ended up on the shower floor, mm. Mm. you know, collapsed mm. in tears. And again, on paper, anyone looking from the outside in would be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. She's, this is amazing. she's this, 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 <laughs> yeah. and she has this, 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 yeah. what could she possibly have? But again, like the, the heartbreak, the, the truly like just yes. total desolation yes. of my spirit because of me trying to like just rig it, you know, yeah. just like just put it like I could doing it his way. I'm finding, and again, I'm not there yet, right? So doing it his way, I just have so much more peace and ladies <laughs> discernment. Let me tell you. The sermon Not is a many people thing. get past the first or second date. Why? Because I see, I just see so much clearer. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm like, oh my gosh, do, do they hear themselves? They are telling on themselves. It's like when someone comes up to me and they say, how high is my favorite movie? You know what I tell them? I say, you just told on yourself, just so you know. I know a lot about you based on that comment that how high is your favorite movie? <laughs> You know what I mean? Of all time. He said of all time. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like it's, it's funny. It's a cult classic, but it, it's your favorite movie? Of all time. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? So now, when I'm with someone or I'm oh, listening to someone, I, I, it's again, it's that sensitivity. Like, I'm not... My, my ear gates and my eye gates are so clear yes. that I can hear things and I can see things because I'm not living it distracted by when are we going to get to this place? I'm yes. like, well, I, I'm living in the place of we're never going to get to this place <laughs> because you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> and you're selfish and you're egotistical <laughs> and you're just trying to impress me, but you're not trying to get to know me. There it is. It's a very big, there it big is. distinction. There of someone's it is. trying to impress you versus trying to get to know you. So Essence, how do guys like try to, do you get a lot of guys that approach you or are they intimidated? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think probably both. Most often I would say slightly younger yeah. men will younger what thirties yeah. yeah and that's always weird because i'm like uh <laughs> shop's closed dude sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's like shop's and they're closed. like what how old are you and I know, i'm like you, you, uh i'll be 50 yeah. soon like you know so it's, it's one of those things because you know 
like don't crack. So sure don't. Um, so Sh- shameless plug for uh, for my new for my new show. <laughs> for the new uh, show. Need, I need a Beyonce fan right now. For, like, don't crack. for the new show. On ABC gonna... coming to you. Actually, we don't know if it's picked up yet. Yeah. So prayers but up that prayers, it will be. Prayers. But um, shout out to Viola for that. Viola like Davis. That. Can yeah. you imagine? Like she, seriously, Viola, Viola Davis is my boss. Like I Larry just, Wilmore is my boss. That's, that's crazy. crazy. That is absolutely crazy. You working with my buddy Tisha? Yeah. Yeah. She toured with me in one of my plays. Oh, and, she's uh, amazing. I love Tisha. And Sherry Shepard. Oh, Sherry Shepard. And Taj Maori. Oh, my God. Who is my brother on Smart Guy. That I just crazy. stare at him. I'm like, why are your hands manly now? Like, why <laughs> Why don't you have 10-year-old hands anymore? He, he said, just why? laughs at me. He's he said, like, why you're your crazy. Hands manly? <laughs> we saw each other, and we were like... <laughs> Fuck just done. started crying because it was just too much emotionally. How many years ago was that, Smart Guy? Smart Guy ended in 99. God, no. Yeah, so he's a grown, grown man now. And I'm God. just like, I'm in awe of him. He's brilliant and funny and charming and sweet. And all the things I remember about him as a child, because when I met him in 96, he was 10. and But now he's this grown up, but he's this grown up with the same spirit. And it's it's so... I'm in awe of him. That's He's dope. really a terrific, terrific man. That is so, so dope. So you get guys around a 30 year range yeah, trying to shoot their shot. Yeah, something. And then they're, um, they're like, so uh, the, the, they'll start the conversation with like, so do you want more kids? And I'm like, ah, here we go again. I, I can't have more, any more kids. Like I'm, I'm done. And they're like, and then they think I did it intentionally. I'm like, no, I didn't, I didn't like get it. Time, time of tubes. Yeah, and that. no, I didn't, that, I, I, I'm just, I've progressed in my life to the point of whatever. And then they're like, oh. And then it's like this Cause, weird, cause awkward not, moment. Because oh, you're so young looking, they just and can't It's this register. weird, awkward moment. So there, that happens. But, but the other thing is, yes to the other thing as well. I think that there are men who like me, who are attracted to me, um, who will like occasionally like be like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, I'm good, how are you? <laughs> we should go out sometime and I'll go sure and then there's no follow up and that I think yeah, that yeah. I think is about being intimidated yes that's yes. about or that or you're just a game player narcissist which yeah, you know yeah. that could be true too I don't know yep. I'm not inside their brain but I'm always open and I try to always be kind and loving because at the end of the day I'm either a, a love letter f- of Christ is happening through me or I am cursing someone like there's really no middle ground like I'm either living as an embodiment of what it looks like to be a believer and a disciple of Christ or I'm in the other camp so Mm. I gotta be very intentional again about how I'm dealing with people not to be and not to be so pervasive or or not clear where they're they're thinking willy nilly or they uh, you know yeah. that I'm not being I'm not being transparent with them either but until I'm claimed I'm single yeah but at the same time I also keep a very strong boundary because I'm like I you need to know that if you're going to step to me if you're going to try and talk to me then there's a way that's predicated not in my word <laughs> you need to figure out how to do it with Jesus because I'm sitting over here, you know, waiting for you to, to do it the right way. Cause it's not that's my, good. It's, it, but honestly, it's not my first instinct. So that's what I'm learning too, because I am a person in my career. So much of what I've accomplished has been based on my mm. impetus, based on my tenacity, based on my, like, yes, I believe God opened the door and orchestrated my career, but I've also been very much an aggressor yeah. in terms of my career. Yeah. And that is not the way we're supposed to be in this dynamic when nah. it comes to Walking romantic relationships yeah. and, and marriage. So it's hard for me sometimes to embrace my feminine energy. Um, you know, hopefully not offending anybody, yeah. whatever, but that's just my belief and how I live. I, it's hard for me to live in that space yeah. of waiting. And it's not a damsel in distress waiting because I live a very full, amazing yeah. life, but definitely waiting for the man to do what it is that he's supposed, man's supposed to, do. to do. You know what I mean? Because I, I, can, I can technically do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... That's the hard part. That's the I, hard part. Technically, I, I can. Like, I put together my own furniture. I have tools. <laughs> like, I can do it. 
You know, I pay my own bills and always have, like I, I can do it. But also like you rob someone, that's the interesting thing. It's like the thing that I was talking about earlier, the joy of being of service. Yes. Like I rob my partner of his joy of being able to do things Talk that I'm it. not supposed to do. Talk about you it. You know what I mean? Of his ability to take care of me. Because I am a successful black woman and that's intimidating. And if you don't know that that's intimidating, all you got to do is look at the stats and see how black women are just stepped on and, yeah. and pushed aside yeah. and all of that. And they still continue to rise and just beat the, the odds and the stats like crazy. You know, we are powerful. We yes. are powerful and we've had to be. Um, but so now to take a step back and to invite someone into a space that says and allows ourselves to say, I need need you mm. that's mm. not easy nah. that's not easy either to be vulnerable and say i need you but again it's about there's like this very fine line God. in terms of getting to a place where you're mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. that to someone who actually wants to be needed there it is there it is discernment there it is because you can find yourself vulnerable to the wrong, wrong spirit. person yeah and that spirit will leave you more Tore up. You'd be spending seven, eight years trying to unwind and untangle like from that. Like Humpty Dumpty boy. trying to put yourself back together <laughs> you again. Like, why? Why? <laughs> why? I waited all this time and I give myself to this person. They jacked me up for a long time. And so that's powerful to actually be intentional. Uh, you said something interesting. I wish I could quote you when you were about to get out my truck and I was like, you open the door for yourself. I said, see, y'all LA folks ain't used to the Southern men open the door. What did you say? I said, I appreciate, but I don't expect. Yes. Yeah. That's I, kind of how I live. You, you know, it's like, I, I appreciate what you did. Like I certainly recognize it and I love a man who's chivalrous and I am teaching my son to be chivalrous. And it's one of the things I love about having my godson. My godson is staying with me until he goes back to college in the fall and he's 20 and he's very conscious and yeah. chivalrous. And so my son is imitating him and I love that. Um, I definitely, that is something that I find incredibly attractive, but I don't, wait Expect, for yeah, it. Yeah. I don't wait for it. Like the only, the only expectations that I know that are without that, are, that will never fail are the expectations I have of God. <laughs> <laughs> He's everybody else. You know I'm what sorry. I mean? But everybody yeah. else, like, and, and the thing is, is, but again, I also know that I need to extend grace because yes. there are days where I, I think I walk around, like I said, with a, with a, a mindset of being conscious about what kind of, what kind of seeds I'm depositing and how I'm treating people. But I definitely have my moments where I'm short tempered or I'm not as like aware and I do my best to catch myself, apologize and rectify the situation. But I'm sure everyone's testimony of me is not going to be glowing. I try to whittle that down so yeah. that it becomes it. In, so that part increases and the other part decreases. Good. But I recognize that I've been given so much grace. So it's really important to me to extend that to others. You know, I mean, again, the word is talking about, you know, we're supposed to love others as we love ourselves. Yes. And I think that that's a critical, you know, there's so much about self-care. Um, and, and I believe in self-care, but more importantly than that is like learning to love yourself. Yes. is so, so important because really you are, how you talk to others is how you talk to yourself. It's funny because it my... My and how you do one thing is how you'll do everything. And it's funny because I remember I had a moment with my godson's mother where she was she was yelling at the kids. She has four sons and she was yelling and she said something to me kind of like in an apology or whatever. And I said to her, I said, I just want you to I just know that that's how you're speaking to yourself in your head. Mm. And I just and I just wish that was different for you. And she just broke into tears. I said, the way you're talking to those boys is how you talk to yourself. And it was unkind. But I know that it starts with her first. It's her own thought of how she, her own inner monologue. And so I think it's really important that we get a hold of that thing, that we get rid of all the, all those 
word curses spoken over yes. us, all the doubts spoken over us, the generational curses that we need to be delivered from, or at least acknowledge. I believe in therapy. I believe in yes. prayer. I believe in Bible study. I believe in all, they're all tools yes. and they work together, especially yes. under the submission of the Holy Spirit. And so I think we have to create this amalgam of what self-care looks like. And it's not just buying yourself a Gucci bag. <laughs> Gucci bags are nice. Or going to the spa. That's nice. But if your inner man is in turmoil talk about it, it doesn't matter what you buy i've literally seen somebody go from regular actor working actor to 100 millionaire and that's when they became a drug addict yes. if that's when if yes. that's something that you've seen yes. you go it's not about the stuff it's not they got everything they wanted yes. and then some yep but it wasn't about the stuff it was about what's going on and in your inside. soul if your soul is not whole, then it doesn't matter what you acquire. And we see it, unfortunately, on the public stage lived yeah. out before us time and time, time and again. time again. Yeah. But we got to talk about this stuff. Like we, we have to heal from these things and we've got to do the work to do it. And there's no amount of, of merchandise. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. No matter what the price tag. Yes. So, Essence, I asked you, I said, Essence, you know, as long as I've known you, when I meet you in 2000 and... I don't know. It was a long time ago because yeah. I think I was on the road. Yeah, I was a play. So, it was yeah. like, it was a long time ago, probably over 10 years ago. Yeah. But I said, and back, even then, you are always such a kind spirit, a, a, a humble spirit. And I asked you before we did this podcast. Oh, yes. I said, have you always been like this or were you like some mean girl that God had to humble you or something i what? wasn't a mean girl but i will say this there was a time when i was starting to work and i had just kind of come to hollywood and i mistook what i saw as being the hallmark of success so yeah. i saw a lot of like snooty yeah. condescension yeah. entitlement and mm -hmm. i was like oh that's what that's what being a <laughs> successful actress looks like okay i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that because i'm a successful actress you know and it was just and it didn't feel right to me and it you know as a child i was bullied i've always been really sensitive i've always loved community i've i I don't like fighting. I don't like dissension. I believe in communicating. I yeah. don't think it's healthy to avoid conflict. Yeah. But I do think that there's a way to go about it that's respectful and honoring of not just yourself, but the other person, yes. right? So there's an approach to healthy conflict and resolution. But when I was younger and what I was seeing, I tried to, I tried that jacket on and I was like, Hey, what is this? And it didn't, you know, and thankfully it didn't fit well or right for very long. And I realized that I actually enjoy being a, an aroma of fragrance. That's pleasant. I mean, mm. my name is essence. So yes. in, in France, the essence is the is the scent, right? Essence in English is about um, what makes something what it is. It's yeah. what's essential to it. It wouldn't be this without this yeah. component. Yeah. But in, in France, it's about aroma. And so for me, it's so interesting because mm. I, I had a new door installed a week ago, two weeks ago, a new front door. And um, the gentleman who was installing my door we, I walked him out to the gate and I asked him if he wanted anything. He was like, no. And then he was finished and I walked him out and he said something and I said something to about God. And he said, well, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. And I said, I am too. And he said, you know, I, I knew that. And I said, how did you know that? He goes, the fragrance in your house. Mm. When I tell you, I almost you ran, ran around, around the block. <laughs> I was like, what? He said, I can smell it in your house. He's mm. like, the aroma is godly in your house. I was like, wow, that's trippy. Because, <laughs> I mean, again, these are things that the Bible talks about. Yes. But when you when you have somebody say that to you and it yeah. like and you get that visible example, yes. of what, you're like, whoa. You're like, this, is, this is the real deal. This here. is the <laughs> real deal. Like, you know, so I try to be intentional about that now. But definitely, like, we 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 put on these these 
arrogances and we yeah. put on these airs and again to assimilate yeah. yes and that's really about not knowing your identity there like at the end of the day i don't have to i don't have to be entitled i don't have to yes. i don't have to show anybody my my credit card i don't i don't yeah. have to do any of that yep i can literally just live in who i am Damn. as a child of god there in the is. purposes that i serve in the ways that i serve i don't have to i don't have to flex there i don't is. I don't, and I actually don't like to. You know, I really enjoy just connecting with people so that they see that we are the same. Mm. Where I am is a is a matter of just making choices that have gotten me a certain amount of propulsion to be in this place. But you're capable. You're a hundred percent capable. If this dream that you have is to want to act or write or direct or whatever. You just got to make the choices to get here. Talk about it. But please don't think that I'm special. We're all special. And that's what makes us all not. Because we all are. Mm. I hope they got that. I hope so. Ooh, Jesus. I hope it made sense. Oh, my God. Let me tell Essence. Yes. We're going to take up an offering. Uh <laughs> 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 let me tell Man, let me tell you something. I, girl, I, listen. I, I just I'm just gonna let that marinate. I don't okay. have I don't have nothing else to say. I have nothing else to say. The last question I want to ask you, and then we're gonna let this go. Okay. You are in what a do place. I eat? Yeah, wait, wait. I already know what you're gonna eat. We're gonna find something. <laughs> I'm really, hungry, y'all. Yeah, we hungry. That's okay, why I so said go we're gonna let this go. So, essence, you are in this place of singleness. Mm -hmm. Do you have any fear? Like, I have a lot of people who inbox me that say, hey, why don't you do episodes about people dating in their 50s and, mm -hmm. and whatnot? Um, is that a fear of yours? Like, you're, you're approaching 50. Mm -hmm. Do you have any fear of this beautiful thing that you have to offer to the most amazing man that God purposed for you? Do you have a fear that that will not come to pass? Yes. I do, but at the same time, um, I choose to trust and I pray often, you know, I'll say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And also there's something else that happens, which is surrender. There it is. There's a surrender that I have where I'm like, if, if God is withholding it for me, there's a reason there and is. there's something that's going to get blessed bigger than me because of it. And it may hurt. It may not be my ideal, may not be what I want, but I honestly would rather die to myself for the greater good. And that's kind of an incredible thing to say because it's not something that I could have said earlier in my walk with Christ. I, I wouldn't have said it. I couldn't have said it. I wouldn't have believed it, but I, I really have seen how good he is and how there is nothing in him that is false. There is nothing in him that is bad. There is nothing in him that has a bad intention for me. So if I, it's being withheld, there is a blessing and a purpose for it that is beyond me and what I want. And I, I think as a mom, I, I really understand that. Yes. You know what I mean? Because there's moments where your kid wants <laughs> something and you're like, okay, I'll give you a little bit. Or you're like, yeah, no, you can't have you can't that because it's it. not good for you. Yes. It's not good for you. And what I have purpose for you on the other side of this, where I'm trying to get you to, that is not what is going to help you get there. That's not going to facilitate it. Now, because God is a gentleman, I still have free will. I can yeah. still choose you can go to get be married like, whoever you, know you want what? to. Call I'm, so and so I'm up and done. say, "I'm done. I'm, I'm, you know, it's been Lord. I'm, <laughs> it's been too long. You're taking too long." And the amazing thing about that is, if that were to happen, which prayerfully I'm, that doesn't. But if that were to happen, what would be required for me to be in right standing is simply repentance. Mm. The love is never withdrawn. There it is. The love is always there. But to be back in right standing is just repentance. It's just, wow, I did this. I rebelled. I'm sorry. Forgive yes. me. And as far as the east is from the west. You cast that center, boy. He removes it from me. Yeah. 
and I get a whole new slate. And I don't know anybody who would give me a whole new slate ever <laughs> without being able to recall every the time, mistakes. Every time. And throw it in your face every and time. And throw it in my face. But that's not God's way. And that, to me, is astonishing. And motivates me to, eh, you know, sometimes it's literally like, it's like, you know, I guess Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm not an alcoholic, but, you know, it's one day at a time. Yeah. And that's sometimes what we have to do. Sometimes to think I'm going to abstain until I meet my perfect person, whether they <laughs> come tomorrow or when I'm 67 or whatever. Yeah. Like sometimes that's just too much. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's just like not today. <laughs> not today, Satan. Not today. Yeah. Um, you know? And 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 then there's a string of those successes that sometimes helps you get to the next Empowers motivation. You. Yeah. Right? So sometimes it's not like, oh, I'm just feeling really motivated to do this all the time. Sometimes it's like, man, you've done this for a while. <laughs> you you should keep going because yeah. you're this is really this has benefited you in yes. so many ways. And yeah, you don't feel like it today, but you can live on the motivation of having strung those days together. Sometimes that helps as well. It's not easy, but I mean, life isn't easy. Yeah. And the Bible says we're going to have trouble. Like, yeah. you know, I think we, we set ourselves up in believing the hype and the lies around us that say, oh, if you do these five steps, you'll have this kind of life and this, you'll be a millionaire and then you'll have this kind of <laughs> husband and you just go get this filler and your face will look and you won't age and go do this. And it's just like, it's all horseshit. Excuse my French, it's not true. You gotta work on your inside. You gotta work on your spirit. Yeah. Like you wanna know why I'm almost 50 and I look like this with no filler. And I mean, I have makeup on right now, but if yeah. you see, me out like because i'm cultivating joy i'm actually mm. in my in my life i actually feel better look better than i ever have before and no i'm not young but i feel better look better because i'm cultivating joy from the inside and it's not dependent on exterior circumstances it's not dependent on on I'm anything preaching. it's just it's really like understanding what really makes me feel alive and honestly you know, again, kind of going back to the school, being of service and hearing those kids in the backyard, even though they've torn it up, <laughs> it's a muddy mess back there. <laughs> Need turf. You know a turf sponsor? Send them my way. Send them way. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, being of service is just, and, and giving these families a safe place to go in the middle of COVID, I pray that they never forget that they were so fortunate to have this group of parents yes. who bonded together and made this thing happen. And um, we've actually committed to doing two more years. So we're gonna do That's it. Good. They're gonna be there for two more years until they're done with the elementary school. And I'm so excited. Like, the have, parents, have you gotten got a logo created for the school? Have you got no, that official? No. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. create a logo for y'all. Okay. I'm, I'm, gonna do a logo. <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm gonna donate a logo. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. That's beautiful. We're gonna make it all official, get y'all some shirts and all but that the, type of stuff. The parents were like, you would you want to do it? Cause I, cause they were like, well, we need to start talking about next year. This was like February. And I was like, okay, well the Holy spirit told me not one more year too. And they were like, what? I said, well, we're not going to do fourth grade and then have them go to an elementary school for a year. The Holy spirit said do two more. So I'm there saying if you guys are down two more years, so we're down. That's dope. When you was talking about how you have joy on the inside, that's a scripture. The Bible says that he will restore the, the days of your youth. Yes. And so it's like like uh, when I picked you up, I said, Essence, you got that <laughs> Benjamin Button, don't you? I said, because every time I see you get younger and younger, and he's like, no, nah, it's not the Benjamin Button. I was like, well, it's something, but it's that, it's, that, it's that Holy Spirit. It's what the Bible says. He will restore the days of your youth, and that's what's manifesting. Well, Essence, we got to go get something to eat. Listen, thank you so so much for blessing the people on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Let me tell you something. You dropped so many gems. We can open up a jewelry store because oh, uh, this is absolutely amazing. Thank you for showing up as your lit self uh, like you. you promised to do. And uh, I just speak blessings over you. And I'm telling you, God is birthing a ministry out of you. And I just can't wait for that thing to come into full bloom. And God just manifest that thing through you because it's, it's so evident. It's so evident. Thank like, you. Like, it's I amazing. appreciate anyone who's tuned in. I appreciate anyone who's supported me over these years and watched me grow and been patient with me. Um, 
and I hope in some way that I've been able to inspire you or make you laugh or entertain you or something. But I mean, the legacy that I hope to leave behind more than anything is one of kindness and love. Because I really believe that if Jesus were right here, that that's what you would see, that mm. you would see love in a way that would change everything. It would dismantle every lie that's ever been spoken over you that said you were bad, that said you couldn't, that said you were worthless. I really believe that you would see love in a way that would just change everything. So I challenge you. I m hope to motivate you to just go out and be just a mirror for what that love looks like, because it really does change everything. I know that the people who've loved me, they have rescued me from my own self-destruction. Mm. They have rescued me from my own self-sabotage. They have rescued me from my own belief and lies that I wasn't enough and I would never be enough and that I could never escape all the things that I had done and all the mistakes that I have, mm. I have made. And those are just lies. They're not true. So you don't need to be a minister. You don't need to know the Bible inside and out. Yes, you want to read it. It's a great guide. It's the mm -hmm. truth is what it is. It's the living word. And the more you read it, the more you'll learn. But the most important thing is that love. Yeah. So just love each other, please. All right. Well, on that note, my God, thank you all so much for joining this episode. Um, thank you, Essence. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Discover, uncover, recover love with the new Dear Future Collection. The journey starts from within. Let your inner thoughts find freedom on the pages of this richly hued Dear Future Blue Sapphire Edition Genuine Leather Journal. It features a cross-stitched spine and luxurious cording to bind your deepest insights. A great accompaniment is the Dear Future Luxury Bamboo Fountain Pen. There's nothing more intentional than the writing process of a fountain pen. This is an elegant writing work of art Join the thriving community of fountain pen enthusiasts and purchase one today. These exclusive items and more are available at dearfuturewifey.com. Man, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. I hope y'all found value in it. Let me tell you something. I was thoroughly blessed by the conversation with Essence. And man, like, listen, that's a way to kick off a season. But here's my favorite part of the podcast where I manifest my future wifey. And um, this one really got me emotional. Dear future wifey, you walk into your favorite Michelin rated restaurant. The hostess pulls up your reservation and escorts you to the table that awaits. A few moments later, the waiter approaches your table, greets you, hands you a menu, and brings a glass of water. You look at the menu and struggle deciding which cuisine to indulge. You've frequented this establishment several times and have tried every entree you've desired, yet you have a taste for something different, something unexpected, something rare. The waiter returns, notices your dilemma, and surprises you with an invite from the chef to join him at the chef's table. The chef prepares you an exclusive five course meal. You're elated. Your palate has long awaited a meal of this caliber, even though you've never been able to articulate it. The chef smiles as you gleefully ingest each tantalizing morsel. He takes pride in your repetitive he takes pride in your repetitive thankfulness for the honor he bestowed to you. Future wifey, the hostess is the Holy Spirit. The waiter is Jesus Christ who is always at your service. The previous entrees you dined on are your exes. Fortunately, your palate has changed because the chef, our heavenly father has prepared me for you. You see, I've dined at this heavenly establishment before. He gave me the chef's table experience as he's given you. I mentally dined on you. You are exquisite. I will be a rare experience for you. Grab your napkin, bone appetite. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally, 
and transparently. And don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.